Guys, we just have two more rounds remaining in the Reddit Championship Series before we head into the top cut. This is round number seven. Now, before we start off with this replay, I do want to apologize because I did put out a poll in the community tab asking you guys which match you want to see being featured for this round. You guys voted for Necros versus Dinosaur, and I was in the middle of commentating that duel just now, but uh, unfortunately, it wasn't very good good there were a lot of bad misplays just a lot of bad plays in general and there was no way i would be able to put that as content but we do have the runner up which is drivable windmill on dragon link and mark kent on math mech hopefully this match goes a lot better than the previous one i was trying to record so let's see what happens the Dragon Link player will be going first here and their opening hand looks pretty disgusting. We see a Chaos Space and a Quick Launch alongside a Black Metal Dragon which is probably one of the best openings you could ask for. So uh, I assume here they'll probably start off with the Black Metal just so they can make a Noctovision play because that way they will be able to potentially discard something better for their Chaos Space rather than their Ash Blossom or Quick Launch, which I assume are two cards that you do want to keep in your hand. But we'll see what happens. So they will start off their turn indeed with the Black Metal Dragon Normal Summon, linking it off into a Striker Dragon. I believe uh, Chain Link 1 will be... Well, I don't really think it matters. So Chain Link 1 will be Striker, Chain Link 2 will be Black Metal, and Chain Link 3 will be Noctil. And yeah, that's what I meant by it doesn't matter, by the way, because the Noctil will just uh, chain block the both of them. So the Darkness Metal will be added here, along with the Boot Sector. And I assume here we're going to be linking off the Noctil Vision with the Striker. I assume we go into the Seal here, right? That seems like the most optimal play. So Drivable indeed does opt to go for the Heretic Seal here. Activating the Noctil to draw a card and... <laughs> wow. Yo, Dragon Link is just... Dragon Link is way too insane of a deck. The Absoluter pitch off of the Chaos Space is just such a free plus. So the Chaos Space will be met with an Ash Blossom. But unfortunately for Mark, Drivable's hand is just absolutely cracked here. So we're going to see the router activating, probably adding the rocket tracer here. Indeed it will. So I'm not too sure what the next play here is. Uh, so they activate the boot sector launch. They'll boot sector to special out the rocket tracer from hand. Tracer effect will be activated targeting the boot sector launch. Presumably, which will be met with the Imperm here. I don't know if I like that play all too much. Uh, but it doesn't really help that I do know what Drivable's hand is. And Mark doesn't. So maybe they assumed they had no other way to play if the Tracer was negated here. But then again, um, we do know about the RDMD in hand. So again, I don't know how good of a play that was to be honest. Hmm. Very interesting. So Windmill just thinking here. They're going to activate the Quick Launch. And unfortunately for Mark, he has no other response. So Windmill is just going to be able to pop off here. And yeah, those two interruptions did almost damn near nothing to stop the Dragon League player. And there's just no way that this deck makes it through the next ban list without getting hit. Because we just had Remus... Like the new Dragoonity card from Ghost from the Past come out. And this deck's not even playing it. That's how good this deck is. Like a card as good as Remus is not being played in this deck. This deck is just way too powerful. Has way too many extenders. And can play through way too many interruptions. So we're going to see the LP activated here. The LP will bring out the Chamber. Chamber will be activated. Adding the Tidying. So now we already have the Tiding and the Seals, and undoubtedly we're just going to get even more cards here. So the Striker will be activated here, getting rid of the LP, adding back the Recharger to hand. And now the Recharger will activate, getting us back a copy of Tracer from the Graveyard. And oh my god, I am just so tired of this deck. I think this is the first time we're featuring this deck, and I just... Oh, I hate Dragon Lake so much. So... 
we're going to see the chamber linked off for a pisty here. Uh, drivable, just explaining to Mark how the tracer was special summoned there. They must have missed it. So yeah, we're going to see the Pisty bring back the Recharger. And I assume we're going to see a Synchro Summon here. Oh no, sorry. The RDMD is going to come out by banishing the Striker Dragon. The Chaos Base will be activated, adding the Striker Dragon back to our deck and top decking a Nibiru. Because as if this deck didn't already have enough interruptions and enough things to play around with, now we have the Ash Blossom, the Nibiru, the Tiding, and the Seal. And we're obviously going to get even more. So the RDMD will activate and in response, Mark will chain Scoop Days. Because they're just going to scoop off the cards and go on to game number two. Undoubtedly, they already knew that the end was written for them in the cards. There's no way they could play through that. There's already two interruptions there. They had three cards in hand. Um, Yeah, I don't even think it mattered what they top deck. There was going to be minimum like four interruptions at that point. So... One negate for probably every card that Mark could play. So it's just good to scoop it up at that point. So going on to game number two. We are going to see Mark select to go first. So at least now we'll be able to see Math Max play. But looking in the hands of Windmill, they have the Nibiru and the Ash. And yet again, they have Quick Launch. Again, wow. So they have a starter and they have Hand Traps to interrupt, interrupt the Math Mech player and Nibiru is probably the perfect hand trap here because a well-timed Nibiru will definitely just end the turn for the Math Mech player here. So, uh, Mark is going to start off with the Sigma here in order to special summon it since they control no monsters in the EMZ. Next, they are going to normal summon the Diameter and unfortunately there's nothing for it to target in the graveyard. But that is okay because I assume we are just going to go into a link play here. We're going to link off the Sigma, go into the Disciple, and I assume this will be material for a Devil T. Yep, so this is actually a pretty cool combination that I learned about when I was playing Cyber's Generators. Uh, it's just a nice way to mulligan a card. We'll be able to get rid of one of the Gammas here because uh, with monsters on the field, this is gonna be a pretty dead card. So the Disciple is going to tribute the Devil T here in order to mulligan one card. We're gonna draw into a Balancer Lord. Obviously, we're gonna put back the Gamma here. And when Devil T is tributed, we can special summon two token monsters, which is pretty cool. Unfortunately, now you're just uh, unable to summon Link 3 or higher Link monsters, but I don't think it's too big of a deal here for the Math Mech player. So we'll see what their next play is. Oh, and I just realized we are we are in the bureau range. So, you know, if Windmill wanted to nib any time, now might be a very good one. So we're going to see the Code Talker Inverted come out, which will activate its effect to special summon a Cybers monster from hand. The Balancer Lord will come out here, and I assume this is when you Nibiru, because this is not a quick effect to pay to get an additional normal summon. So I don't see a better time to nib than here. So let's see. Um, It looks like Mark will be able to activate Balancer Lord's effect. And Windmill is just going to allow it. So this might just be a case of Windmill not being too familiar with the Math Mech strategy. Which I guess is fair. One of the advantages of playing a non-meta deck in a tournament is that there's a chance that your opponent has absolutely no idea what it does. And that just looks like it is the case here. So we are going to link off the Inverted and the Disciple into a Wicked. Um, do you nip here? I assume no because you already allowed the additional normal. So I assume you wait it out. Summon is fine. We're going to link off the Balancer Lord into the Link Rebo. And since a monster was special summoned to Wicked Zone, we're going to be able to banish the Lord. And we are going to be able to add the Nabla to our hand. And since the Lord was banished, we are going to be able to special summon a level 4 or lower monster from our hand. We're going to see the Nabla come out here. And you have to nib at some point. Right? I assume it's here. Nope. We're just going to see the Nabla tribute the Lingaribo. And we're going to see the Sigma come out. Okay, come on. You have to nib here. I, you've just been holding this for way too long now, I think. Alright, so the nib is going to come out. 
So Mark does still have an additional normal summon, which is why hitting it on the Balancer Lord was probably the correct play. Like from the hand that we see, it's probably the correct play. Um, I don't think Math Mix have any other extenders past that point, but I could be mistaken. I'm not too familiar with the deck. So we're going to see the Nib Token come out here and attack. We still do have the Ash Blossom in hand here. We're going to see the Normal Summon of Diameter. And since we didn't use its effect previously on the Normal Summon, we're going to be able to use it now. We're going to Special Summon back the Sigma. We're going to overlay these going into an Alembertian. The Alembertian will activate in order to add a Math Mech card from our deck to our hand. We're going to see Mark retrieve a Math Mech Super Factorial. Now, if you're not familiar with Math Mechs, this card is freaking insane. It allows you to target up to three Math Mech monsters in your graveyard, special summon them, and then immediately use them as material for either a Synchro Summon or for an XC Summon. So it's a very, very good play. That's really, really hard to interrupt unless you have something like a Ghost Bell. We're going to see the Nip Token and the Alumbertium linked off for an IP Mascarena. The Super Factorial gets set, and that is going to be the end of the turn for Mark. Now, we know Dragon Lick is insane and capable through playing through a lot, so let's see how they pilot their way through this one. They're going to go into the main phase here, and I believe they got the Wyvern Buster off the top, which is actually a really good draw. So Windmill is asking to end main phase one. They're going to go into the battle phase, get rid of the IP Mascarena. So that is one potential interruption gone. They're going to go into main phase two. But the thing is here, even though they got rid of the IP Mascarena, the Gamma is now live since we control no monsters on our field. And I think that might actually be the best case scenario for Mark here. So Drivable Windmill is going to activate Quick Launch here. Special summoning the Tracer. I don't think they had any other play anyways. That was probably their only starter. We're going to link off the Nib and the Tracer. Going immediately into an Halky Fibrax. Which uh, is yeah, most definitely going to be met with the Gamma here. So the Gamma will negate and destroy the Halky Fibrax. And the battle phase is over. So there's not much we have to worry about here. Uh, but yeah, Windmill does still have a couple of plays they can go through. Let's see what they choose to do next. It's either going to be the Wyver Buster or it's going to be the World Legacy Guard Dragon. So they're going to activate the World Legacy Guard Dragon. Special summoning back the Rocket Tracer. I assume here they go into the Striker Dragon next. Or sorry, whoa, I was wrong. Mark is thinking on resolution. They do still have the Super Factorial set, which is the only thing Windmill has to worry about here. They're going to go into the Striker Dragon. Adding a copy of Boot Sector Launch. Activating Boot Sector Launch. And here, Mark will activate Super Factorial. And if you don't know what this summons, you're about to find out. It is a very, very powerful card. They're going to XC Summon into Mathmic Laplacian. Which, if you don't know what this card does, um, if a Mathmic card you control would be destroyed by card effect you can attach one material from this card instead but that's not the good effect if this card is an xc summon you can detach up to three materials from it then choose that many effects you cannot choose the same effect twice and you resolve them in the listed order skipping any that were not chosen so i assume mark will go for all three of these here to send one random card from their opponent's hand to the graveyard send one monster they control to the graveyard and send one spell slash trap that they control to the graveyard so this is going to be very, very powerful. So they're going to detach all three. They're going to roll to pick a random card in Windmill's hand. They're hitting the Wyvern Buster, which is probably the best hit that you could ask for here. And then I assume they're going to send the Boot Sector and the Striker Dragon as well. Yeah, that was <laughs> very, very good. They're very lucky to have hit the Wyvern Buster. Um, I don't know how much it would have mattered if they didn't. But it's better off hitting that than hitting off the Tiding or the Ash here. So the Gamma and the Driver will be banished. And now that I think about it, didn't Windmill have the Gamma in hand? Or sorry, the Ash in hand. I guess they didn't want to Ash the Gamma there. Yeah, no, I, I, I guess that was the right call. So we do see the top deck call by the Grave here. Uh, unfortunately, no other monsters swing for any more damage. 
Mark is going to go into the battle phase, swing for 2k. They did draw the call by the grave, which is very, very good against Dragon Link. And we do see the Ash in hand, and in the simplified game state, Call by the Grave may possibly come very, very clutch. So, unfortunately, Windmill only draws the lands here, unable to play anything on their turn. But it's not any better for Mark, who sees the top deck parallel exceed, which they won't be able to summon. So, it looks like we're just going to see another battle face to swing for 2k here. Yeah, that's just going to be the end of the turn. We see a top deck black metal dragon, which is very, very strong. But with Call by the Grave set, uh, I don't think it'll be too relevant here. We're going to see the normal summon of the Black Metal. We're going to see the Striker Dragon come out here. And we're going to see the effect of Black Metal probably get negated by the Call by the Grave here. 100% the correct call. You don't want Windmill getting access to RDMD here. And I guess that's really all they can do, right? I mean, they can activate the Striker here. Clicking next play, but it's not going to the next play, which is kind of annoying. So yeah, they will activate the Striker Dragon here. Um, adding back the Rocket Tracer to their hand. And that should conclude their turn since they already did use their normal summon. And hopefully Mark draws a better card here. He draws the Nabla. The uh, Lantia is activated early on. But it won't be too relevant here, I believe. Because I don't think this has to banish, right? No, it doesn't. So yeah, that's completely fine. All Mark has to do is deal 4k damage to win the game. Are they able to do it? The Nabla will be normal summon here. Do they have a Link Wand they can go into? Uh, it doesn't seem like it. They're going to use the effect to tribute the Lapalation, but unfortunately that will be met with the Ash Blossom. Very, very unfortunate. The Callback Ray was super necessary to use the previous turn, so it sucks that they couldn't keep it for the Ash. Let's see, uh, do they have anything else or are they just stuck on the Nabla here? Oh, they have Sigma in Graveyard, which if they control no monsters in the extra monster zone while this card is in their hand or Graveyard, they will be able to special summon it, but it will be banished afterwards. That's actually pretty damn good, I'm not gonna lie. But do they have enough to deal 4k is the question. We're gonna see an XC summon going into an Alambertian. Island Birdian will activate to add one Math Mech card from the deck to their hand. Uh, I wonder what they add here. Adding a Math Mech Equation. So they can target one Math Mech monster they control, special summon it, and if they do, it gains a thousand attack. And ooh. That should be game then. Yeah, they're all at 1k attack. A boost of 1,000 more will put them at 2k, and that should be 4k exact. Yeah, Windmill has no other response here. The equation will bring back the Nabla. That's 2k, 2k. And they'll just be able to swing for game here. Yeah, Windmill will concede here. And we are going on to a game number three. So, hopefully, Mark does open interruption in game three like they did in game one. And hopefully, Windmill's hand isn't as insane. I want to see a competitive game. And I am low-key rooting for Mathmex just because, you know... We probably are going to see more Dragon Link once it comes to top cut. So I'd rather see it lose now. You know, let's see some cool Math Mech plays. I, I, like, I'm sure that's what we all came for here. I don't think anyone clicked this video to watch Dragon Link. If you did, uh, let me know down in the comments below. Because I'm very curious. So, it looks like for the opening hands, we have two Godarlas in the hand of Mark Kent. And we have a Gamma in there as well. However, Windmill's hand um, is looking pretty damn strong, I'm not going to lie. We see the Brothar and the Tactics, so if the Gamma is used here, which it will be on the normal summon of Chamber, uh, yeah, I mean, I like that play if I didn't know the hand of Windmill, but now that I know the hand, I really, really don't like this because we're going to see the Brothar activated here. Yeah, and the tactic is alive too, which is really unfortunate. So, that's going to get special summon here. And Mark can't sing. They didn't even know about that effect of Brotar. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Dragon Link just has so many good cards in their deck. It's actually really crazy. So, Windmill is thinking here on their next play. They do have some options here. 
They're going to activate Brotar's effect on Special Summon, pitching the Ravine, adding a copy of Tracer to hand. So they no longer have their normal summon. However, they will activate the Talents to be able to peek at the hand of Mark Kent in order to shuffle a card back. Now, they did draw into two Kaijus. So shuffling one back here wouldn't make any sense. So I assume we'll probably shuffle back. Huh. I don't even know what you shuffle back here. It's either the Lord or the Edition. I would probably shuffle back the, uh, the Lord. But then again, it doesn't matter because you can just negate the effect for additional normal summon. So I guess it's not a big deal. It looks like they'll shuffle back the Edition here. So that's fine. We're going to banish, or yeah, the Brotar will be banished since it was special summon. We'll see the Striker Dragon come out here, adding a copy of Boot Sector launch. We're going to see Striker Dragon banish in order to special the RDMD. RDMD will activate in order to special summon the Chamber from the Graveyard. Unfortunately, we already attempted to use her effect, so we won't be able to this turn. But I assume it's just going to be used as Link material here, so it's no big deal. Windmo just taking a quick think here. So yeah, they do have some plays. They will be able to boot sector after to special summon the Rocket Tracer if they decide to link these two off. Unless they see a different line of play that I don't. Yeah, so they will link those two off. I assume into the Heretic Seal. Because uh, I'm looking at their list. They're only on one copy of Veen. So Romulus wouldn't make very much sense here. And I don't think they have anything they want to discard for the Romulus or the Ravine anyways. Uh, so the Boot Sector will come out here. Special summoning the Tracer. Tracer will activate popping the Boot Sector. Specialing out a Rocket Recharger. And we can go for a Synchro play here. Or we can go for a Guard Dragon play as well I believe. So yeah it's either going to be the Chaos Synchro or the Guard Dragon play. So we'll see what Windmill goes for here. Keep clicking next play and it's just not going to the next play. Just a little bit annoying. So we do see them opt to go for the Chaos Ruler. Being able to mill 5 cards. Ooh, they hit the Absa Router as well. That is, uh, that's pretty disgusting. So I assume they add the Collapse Serpent here. Yeah, oh my god, those 5 mills are just insane. Definitely the right call to go into the Chaos Ruler here. Router will activate here, adding a copy of Rocket Synchron. Mark just confirming what the add off was the Chaos Ruler. It is the Collapse Serpent here. We're going to see the Safer Vanished for the summon of the Collapse Serpent, which will be linked off into the Guard Dragon LP. Collapse Serpent will activate to add the Wyver Buster. And we're just going to see the Collapse Serpent Banish here. Special summoning the Wyver Buster. Do we have the Chaos Base in Graveyard? We do not. So that will be linked off into the Striker Dragon, which will make the LP live since two zones point to the middle here. We're going to see the special summon of Noctal Vision here. So we're going to get a free draw of the Noctal Vision once it's linked off. The Striker Dragon will activate here. We're going to add the Recharger back to our hand. Only to pitch it so we can special summon out the Tracer. Man, Dragon Link, it's just, it's just way too good of a deck. Oh. I I feel kind of bad for the Math Mech player here. Because I, I, I don't see what they can do. So we're going to see the Quad Boral come out here. Because like typically Gamma and Akaiju against many other decks would be pretty good and just enough to play. But... That's insane. We're going to see the Chaos Space here is drawn off of the Noctal Vision. Like, wow. This is, what, the second game? Or what is it? The third game in a row where we're seeing the draw off the Noctal Vision just be absolutely insane. So, Windmo just viewing the graveyard here. Going to be activating the Quad Boral effect. Getting rid of the Chaos Space and bringing back the Tracer and the Rocket Recharger here. See the Chaos Space Banish in order to add back the Striker Dragon and draw a card. And it just happens to be Ash Blossom. What are these top decks? First the Chaos Ruler Mills. Then they draw off the Noctal Vision. And then they draw off the Chaos Space. That's just cracked. Oh my god. We're going to see the Rocket Tracer and the Recharger here. 
getting synchro summoned into the savage dragon oh boy I, I think what do you do at this point you have to deal with the bounce so yeah these get banished in the end phase we're gonna see the top deck sigma which is nice considering a math man got shuffled back so it's almost as if nothing happened but it's almost as if you drew nothing as well oh man like even with the kaiju there's just not enough to play through this we're gonna see the balancer lord normal summon here and you do just have these savage to negate the effect so do you even bounce with the seal here i don't know we're gonna see the seal activated here and i don't even know if that's the correct play because you know they have the kaiju in hand so they would still have to tribute the seal to play around the interruption meaning you would still get the seal effect so yeah again i probably would have just negated that with the savage we're gonna see the chamber come out here after bouncing the lord chamber is going to add the tiding to hand I mean, you kaiju the savage here now, but it, it's just not enough because I don't think you kill here, can you? So we're going to kaiju the savage here. Uh, this can be special summon if I'm not mistaken. Oh, they're going to special summon the kaiju alongside as well. Activating the stigma effect here. Uh, can they make a play here or do they just swing is my question. Are they linking off here or? Oh, so they go for a synchro play, which is pretty cool. Going into the Geo Mathmech Final Sigma. Um, but this is not lethal. It's going to be able to deal double damage. But unfortunately, it wasn't made with, I believe, Multiplication is the one where you can OTK with it. Yeah, that's, um, that is really unfortunate. So the Sigma is banished because it was special summoned. Uh, we're going to be able to deal double damage here, but unfortunately, it's only 4,000, which just isn't enough. That's going to be the end of Mark Kent's turn, and I mean, with the Rocket Synchron and the Chaos Ruler and the Ash and the Tiding, I just, I don't know what you do. That's probably the, yeah, and then the World Legacy Guard Dragon to top deck. That's probably going to be the end of the game this turn. I do see an OTK happening. Uh, I don't know if Mark sits through this. They literally have no form of interruption whatsoever here. We're going to see Windmill activate the War Legacy Guard Dragon. They're going to special summon the Chamber. Chamber will add another copy of Tiding here. And it looks like Mark is saying, I guess it's a GG. Yeah, that was a good game. Very good attempt by Mark. Uh, both players were X1. Unfortunately, Mark will now be X2. I'm really, really having my fingers crossed that Mark can win out uh, round number eight because it would be really cool seeing Mathmech go into top cut. But yeah, it was a great effort. Unfortunately, this uh, this round, we were able to see why Dragon Link is just the best deck of the format. The deck is just, it's absolutely insane. It can play through so much. It has so many good extenders. Hopefully... It gets hit on the upcoming ban list. I'm crossing my fingers right now. You can't see it, but I am doing it. If you guys enjoyed this video, please remember to like. And if you want to see round number eight, it will be uploaded tomorrow. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Bear signing off. Peace, guys.